And then I want you to find the probability of a blue and blue and blue without replacement. So that's our, our goal for today, so for the rest of our day, figure out that stuff. Maybe we'll talk about a couple more later on. Okay, probability of green and blue with replacement. With replacement means you draw the marble out, you put the marble back, then you draw again. So with replacement, what's the probability of selecting a green marble, please? Four, four out of nine. What now? Four out of nine. Why nine? nine? Okay, great. So what we're looking for is the probability of green times the probability of blue, given you picked out a green one. Here's how you write this out in math speak. You just need to write the same thing all these times and be able to determine with replacement or without replacement. That's pretty much it, right? That's why we stick to this formula. We don't have to get confused between these two. It's just one. It's just one formula. So what's the probability of selecting a green? You said four out of nine times. What's the probability of selecting a blue marble given you selected a, a green marble first? You okay with the green marble? Four to nine. What's the probability of selecting a blue marble now given you just pulled out the green one? Why out of nine? Sure, this is with replacement. So there's still two marble, two blue marbles. There's still nine marbles total. How do you multiply fractions? Straight across. Straight across. So we're going to get what on our numerator? Over? No. Let's multiply fractions. <laughs> We do know how to multiply, please. Nine. Nine, nine. <laughs> Let's try this question. Do the eights cancel? No. They got it. <laughs> Fractions are multiplied straight across. Right? You, you do. <laughs> I'm saying, Mr. I graduated calculus. Uh, no, it's not 18. Okay. Yeah, no, it's, it, we, we multiply straight across. You simplify as you go as well. Nothing simplifies here, so we have 8 over 81. You punch that into a calculator, you find me a decimal. Notice how that's a relatively small probability. So I say, what's the probability of selecting a green marble, putting it back, and then selecting a blue marble? It's pretty low. It's not up there. It's not like 50-50 or something like that. It's pretty low probability. Okay, let's do the green and blue without replacement. So this would be the probability. It's going to be identical. Probability of selecting a green times the probability of selecting the blue, given you just selected the green. Um, what's the probability of selecting the green? Notice how this one's the same, right? Probability of green, that's, that's just there. That's your first marble. That's not going to change. Times, can you tell me the probability of selecting a blue marble, given you just selected the green marble, and you kept it out? Good, there's still two blues, but there's only eight marbles. How much is that going to be? You could put 8 over 72. However, this does simplify. So you need, do need to know how to simplify fractions. 4 goes into 4 one time and into 8 two times. True? 2 goes into 2 one time and into 2 one time. You get 1 9. You get 1 9. It's a slightly better probability that this is going to happen than this is going to happen. And I hope you understand why. If you pull out a green marble and then you look for a blue marble, if you put it back, you add one more to the marble numbers that's not green, right? That, or I'm sorry, that's not blue. So you, you have less probability of selecting that blue marble. But if you keep the green one out, there's only eight marbles now to choose from. You have a better probability for that second marble to be blue. That's the idea here, okay? Do the next ones. Please, please. Thank you. 
We only have a few more minutes, so we're going to start on this problem over here. The problem is selecting a red and a red without replacement, meaning you can select a red marble, you're not going to put it back, and you can try to select another red marble. The first red marble, you have three of them. So probability of red times the probability of red given red without replacement. Probability of red, this one, is three out of nine times the probability of getting a red given that you've got the red out already and you kept it out. How many reds are left? How many marbles are left? Perfect. So you're going to get six. Uh, you can reduce this as well. Sorry. Two goes into two one time. Two goes into eight four times. Three, nine, one twelfth. You have a one twelfth probability of selecting a red marble and then another red marble. Are you okay with that one? How many people got that one? Good. You can give me a decimal as well. That's fine. How about blue and blue and blue? Well, this would be blue, given you got a blue. Given you got a blue. So what's the first one? Blue. What's this probability of selecting your first blue? Times, what's the probability you're going to keep it out, by the way, and select another blue? Okay, what's the probability you're going to get another blue? Zero. Why zero? <laughs> if I say this, hey, I've got a bag full of uh, two blue marbles and the rest of them are different colors. I'll give you a million dollars if you select out three blue marbles in a row without putting them back. <laughs> and, or you give me ten dollars if you can't do it. Is that a good deal? I'll make you that bet all day long. Okay. Is it going to happen? No, there's only two blue marbles. You can't draw out three, and there's only two of them. So you'd have zero over seven for sure, right? There's zero blue marbles over seven marbles remaining. But look what happens here. What's two times one times zero? zero. Nine times eight times seven is some big number, but it doesn't matter. You have zero over some number. This is going to be zero. That's an impossible probability. Now, as far as the last one goes in the last minute and 10, uh, 20 seconds that we have up here, if we're going to roll a die, what this is going to be is the probability of 1 times the probability of 2 times the probability of 3 times the probability of rolling a 4. Because all these things are independent. The dice doesn't affect each other. So this probability would be probability of 1 times the probability of 2 times the probability of 3 times the probability of 4. They're independent events. Those probabilities aren't affecting each other. So you would have 1 sixth, 1 sixth, 1 sixth, 1 sixth. Or someone take 6 to the 4th power time when you get it. Anybody? 1,296. Is that a good probability? So I say, uh, I'll make you a bet on this one. And I say, you roll the die four times in a row. You have to get a 1, a 2, a 3, and then a 4. Is that going to happen? Probably not. Pretty low probability right here. Are you guys understanding the independence as far as this goes? How about this one? Uh, this would be without replacement. Without replacement. Probability of the ace. How many aces would you have to start with? Four. Out of <coughs> times. How many kings would you have? Four. Out of? 51. Explain why 51. Okay. Times how many queens? Four. Out of? Four jacks out of 49. Four tens out of 48. If you multiply those, you do your simplification. I don't know what the numbers would be, but you are not going to have a very large probability. It's very small. So this would actually be the probability of getting any straight just by drawing cards out. You go, oh, here's it. You draw five cards, randomly draw five cards in a row. This, whatever this equals, is going to be the probability of getting a straight out of the deck of cards. How many people are today? I'm sure that probability stuff. Very good. Fantastic. Very good.